Yes, I have a lot of turkey stories. And, and we just had so much. And the reason I'm blanking is because we also drank a lot. <laughs> we, uh, no, well, everybody got hammered with Toby. If you were in the vicinity, you were going to get hammered with Toby. <laughs> I, I, I just moved to town, and we heard that the Toby Keith had cut this song, that recorded the song that we we wrote. And so I was like, oh, my gosh, Toby Keith, that's pretty cool, man. It's freaking Toby Keith. We actually were in Virginia Beach one night on his birthday, and uh, he was like, all right, boys, meet me at the bus after the show. We go sit in the tailgate area, crack a cold beer, and wait for Toby's set to finish. And then he comes, and he's like, all right, I want to introduce you to my friends. Boys, this is SEAL Team 6, and uh, this is Post Malone. Toby had some epic parties on his bus after shows, and uh, Brian O'Connell, our, our promoter for those shows at the time, who's still a very good friend, uh, would DJ with his computer. He'd have all the tunes going, and that bus was just up. And t- wow. We'd start rocking, you know? And, yeah. uh, and I'm in this bar, and I look over in the corner, and there's Toby Keith sitting on his own, drinking in the corner. And I said to a friend of mine, I'm like, oh, it's Toby Keith. I'm going to go over and say, I introduce myself, you know, because I wrote a song, you know, because I wasn't, I had, I had no deal, nothing, right? So, Toby's had a few, and he looks at me kind of surly, and uh, he goes, huh? I said, oh, uh, you, uh, you, I think you recorded a song you wrote called Jesus Gets Out. And he goes, yeah. I said, oh, well, I, um, did you like the song? He goes, we cut it, man. And I went, yeah, yeah, no, thank, I, thank you so much. Did you, I mean, you obviously write a lot of songs. It's unusual for you to record an outside song. Did you like the song? We cut it, man. <laughs> you know, but it was, he was just a fun, uh, fun loving guy. And But y'all never got like hammered and stole a horse or anything. Well, I never did that. Um, I never stole a horse. I can't ride horses. We're very good anyway. (laughs) And we all went up on the bus. And uh, me, Post Malone, Toby Keith, and SEAL Team 6 played guitar until 4 o'clock in the morning on Toby's bus. That was pretty wild. Yeah. That's crazy. That was pretty wild. Yeah. Luckily, I got to meet him years later, and we had the best time. I rode rode on his tour bus for his 40th birthday. Oh, wow. It was a hell of a memory because we pulled into a... Steak and Shake about 3 a.m. Sitting in a booth with Toby or Pat eating Steak and Shake. It was fantastic. Keith Urban and Toby Keith at <laughs> a Steak and Shake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. We shared a few dips and a few whiskeys. And, uh, no, I, I absolutely love the man. I appreciated his, uh, just his his sense of individuality and who he was and his authenticity. And it makes me really sad. I'm not ever going to see him again in this lifetime. But I think we'll all see each other again. Yeah. Toby would kind of leave you with your head sideways sometimes. It, yes. It, it just how talented he was. And his talent to me was different. There was the God-given element that it was there, but there was also the parts that he ground out himself. You know, man, just through years of experience. And I feel like at one point, you know, he just said, I'm going to be me unapologetically. And, you know, to do that and succeed at it, you had to be a man worth something. Toby was definitely um, a huge part of uh, getting me started. Um, he took me out on tour with him. We did about 30 dates over a summer with him. And the coolest part about Toby was just getting to see him command an audience. You know, he, at the time, was one of the greatest live performers to ever do it. And just, um, you know, we were used to playing nightclubs where you stand behind a mic for an hour and a half and just kind of honky-tonk in the stages, you know, 12 feet wide by 12 feet deep. And there's not a lot of running around going on. Well, going out with Toby, and having a huge amphitheater where you have to entertain 30,000 people and there's a catwalk and a massive stage and smoke and pyro. It was, I learned a lot about how to put on a live show and command an audience of that size from him. It didn't matter if it was a big crowd or a big stage. He would get on any stage that had a live mic on it. And and we lived that our whole lives. And he, if we were ever at a, a bar that had a piano playing with a microphone, he was, exactly, Jeff Ruby Steakhouse here. Uh, there's There were, thousands of nights where he would just hop on stage wherever we were and give a show to you know a hundred people in a restaurant there were a lot of good singers out there and toby was a good singer and a great singer but uh not everybody can write a song like that that just appeals to the masses and he, he like got into his audience's head and knew what they wanted to hear i think he just wrote from his heart i just uh, i miss him you know and, and we all will miss him you know for a long time it's it's hard to see somebody like that i mean he was really in his prime you know too. yeah you, you see folks you know they get old and they do this and you know they fade away but man toby just went out you know he was a bright star man bright shining um i hate it i hate it but, you know he's playing sea world 
And there were a bunch of protesters out there protesting SeaWorld, whatever, save the whale, you know. Toby said, I hope they're not protesting me. He said, I love whales. I just can't eat a whole one. And there you go, that's Toby. There you go.